uh, good afternoon everyone thank you so much for joining today's session uh, on anxiety so we have uh, with us uh, uh, sheila who is going to take the session for us uh, let me briefly introduce uh, sheila to all the attendees today and then i'll and and, and open the session for sheila to come in and, and talk to you all guys okay so uh, sheila mathila khan is a uh, author of the book i complete me an acknowledged expert in her field Sheila Mudalakat, founder and lead coach from Year 24, is an internationally certified Master Spirit Life Coach. With more than three decades of hands-on experience in brand building, strategy planning, and entrepreneurship, Sheila Mudalakat shares uh, with her clients that success is not a game of chance or luck of the draw. She has been associated with companies like Hero Motor Corp, Honda Motors, Atel, Ad Factors, Great Sports Infra, and Arcesium. to name a few for their corporate training for personal excellence she has also been a keynote speaker for the women's swing of organizations like emerge aga khan foundation and herbal life sheila mutlakat is on a passionate mission to help people live with awareness and create with consciousness thank you so much sheila for joining us this afternoon it's a pleasure having you here uh, and and sort of come in and speak for all our audience today thank you so much thank you thank you shiva okay. now i open the floor uh, to you shila please okay. go ahead so good evening everyone and welcome to the session on anxiety and specifically anxiety about going back to work so one of the things that i will require you all to do is one be very alert because unlike other webinars you can't just put your earphones on and forget that i exist while i talk i will be asking you to do to chat with me in the chat box so please be please feel free to use the chat box i'll be keeping a, a look on it and checking it yeah so now when we speak about anxiety one of the things that really happens is anxiety is a really really uncomfortable space to be in it is said that it is one of the world's it is actually world's number one mental health issue and most of the people think it's depression which is number one in um, world health but actually anxiety really takes the cake and really takes the stand and stands over there because one of the things that anxiety does is it's a very sneaky thing we take we believe that it is so natural to feel anxiety that we don't even give it a second thought and anxiety just actually creeps in on in on us and because it makes us so uncomfortable one of the things that we do is immediately try to shove it away push it under the carpet refuse to address it or do things to distract ourselves uh, from anxiety for instance we start uh, watching continuous netflix we start scrolling through our social media we go through our tiktoks and now we have lot of reels we go through our reels we overeat we oh, we go for shopping binges we start doing everything that we can so that we don't address anxiety and just like anything else that is not addressed in your life the moment you try to shove that under the carpet it just comes back to bite us all so before i move into it i want to ask you how does anxiety make you feel type in the chat box how does anxiety make you feel what happens to you when you are anxious i'll give you some examples to make it easier for you for example the clients that i work with uh, on a regular basis on anxiety some of the things that they've said to me and i am also a highly anxious person so i know what happens to me my hands grow cold i start feeling very jittery i start feeling restless in fact um, just before coming on this webinar uh, preeti my associate who was there with me one of the things that she was saying is relax relax don't walk around so much don't be so jittery but those are things that we do when we are when we are anxious so yeah thank you for saying that shridhar says you repeatedly think about the same things wonderful yes that is absolutely one of the things that happens what else happens to you when you're very anxious you feel hopeless these are feelings confused lose focus fast breathing and palpitation sweat a lot yes wonderful now if some of you see that others have written symptoms which you forgot please don't feel free to copy and paste again yeah 
yeah you lose concentration you procrastinate you walk here and there venkatesh you are my friend yes i do that too walking all around anger yes wonderful and this anger is uh, mostly it is uh, misplaced anger we have anger towards ourselves and or towards someone else and that gets transferred onto someone else fast heart beat reflects in other activities yes anxiety in office work absolutely thank you thank you very much for your participation now i want to ask you another question you have all come on to this webinar today i want to ask you do you think you are going to get a permanent solution for your anxiety was a trick question do you think you're going to get a permanent solution okay 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 wonderful most of you are very smart yes so because if you had uh, come except for one person who said yes one or two people who said yes there is no permanent solution for anxiety okay absolutely no solution because why because anxiety is an emotion and just like every other emotion in our body anxiety will always be there you know how it is when you you don't say oh my god if you're happy today and you're ha not happy the next day you don't say oh it's okay but with anxiety you want a permanent solution so anxiety because it's an emotion it will stay in our body now emotion if you split the word it is e motion which is energy in motion and what is the the quality of energy is that it flows and it moves now like amber says it is absolutely every emotion is temporary it lasts in our body for 10 seconds but because we hold on to it what happens is anxiety then becomes blocked within our body and when it starts becoming blocked in our body we stuff it down it is stuck everywhere when it gets blocked that is when we start experiencing the symptoms of anxiety so what i'm going to teach you today is that how do we manage anxiety so that it no longer interferes with our work so that it doesn't show us how to procrastinate so it doesn't cause memory loss like shridhar says so any of those issues that you have anger that you may have we will i will show you how we will manage the entire thing because emotions are all about managing it's not about control everyone clear clear and with me type yes so that's okay wonderful so now i want to uh take you back to your childhood let's um, imagine that you have been um, you you are a child of 4 or 5 your mother or your dad or your grandmother has just read you a story now sometimes what we parents do is to put the children to sleep we also read them scary stories okay and then we leave them to sleep alone in the room now we are lying down alone in the room and as you're lying over there you hear this tip 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 sound you keep hearing and you you because you're only 4 years old or you're 5 year old you're not scared yourself you're wondering if that ghost from the story that your grandmom read is that ghost running on the rooftop and you are so scared you're extremely scared then you get up now this this like i told you is a strange thing that we parents do to put children to sleep we scare them to sleep i remember when my kids were small and we used to in my mom's house the neighboring compound was belonged to some, the priest and they had a chicken coop with one electric bulb and we used to scare our children by saying see see can you see that monster with one eye and the children would shut their eyes and go to sleep so the thing is <laughs> we thought that was the best way to put them to sleep now now we know better but then if you heard this tip 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 if you know that and then you run out of the room and say oh my god there is a ghost here and your father takes you out and says see it is just water dripping from the tree for instance that is that is all it is once you hear that and you notice that do you think you'll be afraid ever again of this tip tip sound tell me no because once you understand the cause of something then there is no fear so similarly what i want to do today is i want to take you through why anxiety happens in our body 
I want you to understand that one of the things is one of the things that happens with anxiety is that it belongs to your primal brain or your caveman brain, which is right here. And the job of this brain here, the primate brain, is just to keep you protected. So anxiety is a means of the of your brain telling you, be careful, danger ahead, danger ahead. Now, the thing is, your brain has no idea what is dangerous and what is not, because it was born during the caveman times when all the danger that was there was a tiger's roaming around in the forest, right? And at that point of time, you needed this brain because what, what happened is, let's say you go out and you hear some noise in the bushes, you part those bushes and you look and you see something staring back at you. Now, there are only two questions you can ask. Can I eat it or will it eat me? Now, if you can eat it, you have to fight that thing. And if that one is going to eat you, you bloody well have your legs in running order and run away from that place, right? So that's exactly what, what our brain does. Our brain has three jobs to do, is to tell us to fight, flight, or freeze. You know, which is why sometimes, let's say you are giving a presentation in office and you switch the PPT on and then you look around and you see everyone staring at you and your brain goes into a freeze mode and you have no words which come. It happens very often to me during during presentations, also workshops like this. Okay, so just that you have to work around it and say, okay, this is your brain's job. It is supposed to protect you from that tiger. It doesn't understand that there are no more tigers walking around on the road now. There are no more tigers walking in and out of your office cabins. The tigers that we have now are the projects that we have to finish. The tigers that we have now are the conflicts that we have with our partner. The, uh, the tigers that we have now are the arguments that we have had with our in-laws, with our children. Uh, the tigers that we have now is where we are always running against time, trying to finish, finish, uh, finish our work. So this is why you have to understand that your brain is just trying to protect you. Now, what happens when your brain is protecting you, when you go into a fight or flight mode, there is a very interesting phenomenon which happens in your body. What happens here is that the moment the brain senses a danger, it withdraws all the blood from your brain and pushes it into your lower limbs. Why? Because you have to run away. You might, so it goes into your hands and legs because you have to either run away or climb some trees. And what else also happens is because you need a lot of energy because you're on a fight or flight mode, it increases the level of, ox of glucose in your body. Your heart has to beat faster to pump blood to the extremities. Now, when all this is happening, there are few jobs which the body has, which is going to be shut down. For instance, if you're running away from the tiger, you don't need to use your brain too much. You just have to run. So your brain, your brain starts becoming foggy. Your heart is beating very fast. So because of that, and all the blood is going to the extremities, there is adrenaline and cortisol, which is pouring into our body. And with adrenaline and cortisol, what happens is digestion stops, reproduction stops, excretion stops creativity stops so you have no you don't need to you know digest your food or do any of those things when you're running away the only thing which happens is an increased heart rate increased blood sugar so now we don't have those tigers like i said but we still have that high stress level in our bodies and because of that we walk around as if we are in danger all the time which is why all the time, we are walking around with high glucose levels, high blood pressure, cardiac issues, digestion issues. I don't mean to scare you guys. Actually, it's okay if you get a little scared. I just wanted to understand that this is what is happening in your body. And because this is happening and you don't want to face any of those things, we've never been taught how to regulate our nervous system and go back to actually, you know, slow breathing or any of those things. We don't know. So we walk around with constant palpitation and anxiety. Now, my question is, what about going back to office is making you stressed? Would you like to type in the chat box? I'd like to understand what about going back to office is making you stressed or making you anxious?
any idea i don't understand shridhar facing the traffic okay not feeling like going fear of staying away from family when you have to travel out station okay comfort zone yes traveling to new city wonderful yeah see for 2 years uh, i did this exact uh, i did this kind of a webinar for the bombay management association when uh, this they thought that the pandemic was over and everyone was going back to work way back in 2021 but then this came back again with a with a bang so we have a whole lot of uh, fears that we have now one of the things that has happened is in this past 2 2 to 1/2 years of working from home is that um, we find it we've become very comfortable we can work from anywhere we want we can work from our um, bedroom we can work from the mall we can work from a theater we can work from the toilet we don't need to dress up we can just clean up this much portion and stay there and some of us don't even need to be on um, on video what also is happening is we've got used to sitting at home and all these fears we faced all these right so many years that we've been going to work we've been facing all this now the thing is so far you've been looking at your meeting your colleagues over the video now you have to go and actually be in close contact with your uh, colleagues one of the things that comes to mind is your social anxiety will they like me will i like them what if they judge me what if i don't meet their standards these are common things that we have then we have general anxiety where we just generally feel jittery for no rhyme or reason and the third most important anxiety which happens is where we have a what is an what is called an event related anxiety where you feel anxious because you have to let's say you have to do a presentation because you have to attend office party because you have to any of those things yeah yes akash when you are uncomfortable talking to people and we've not we don't have any coping skills or any conflict resolution uh tools that we have with us yes so we are worried now do you understand that all the things that you put in i want you to look at all these and do you i want you to tell me are they happening right now are they happening right now right now as in at 3:48 pm is it happening right now no right and yet those fears are very 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 real so what are you doing you are living it twice once now and once when you actually go out yes do you understand what i'm saying anxiety is always a fear about something that is going to happen in the future so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you a few tools which will help you with handling anxiety now this is a very very practical hands on session so i want you to do it with me this is a do with session so i will want you to do it with me i cannot see you but i am assuming and i'm hoping that you will follow through with all the steps that i'm saying if you're with me and are committed say c in the chat box c for committed let me see wonderful awesome you're a great bunch of people okay so you have i've already told you that the first thing that happens when you when you are <laughs> zakir is very committed or your uh, your keyboard is misbehaving so i've already told you that one of the things that happens when you have when you have fear when you see when the brain thinks that there is a tiger is that you go into a fight or flight mode and you will notice that when you're in a fight or flight mode you start doing breathing very shallowly because when you breathe deeply you relax and your brain doesn't want you to relax so your brain makes you work uh, to breathe very very fast so which is why your heart will beat fast and you will be breathing shallowly so the first and this is the simplest thing that you can do for anxiety this you can do anywhere every time you start feeling those ang- anxiety pangs you can do this and that is what you something that you have with you at every point of of the day at every minute every second and that is your breath now uh, 
a lot of my young clients when they come to me and they have this anxiety attacks and i tell them well the first thing that you need to do is practice breathing they all roll their eyes so i hope you're not going to roll your eyes and i want you to do this very very simple exercise and that is i want you to place one hand on your heart and i want you to place your other hand on your stomach i hope you can see this okay so yes, now sir. what we're going to do is as we as you breathe in i want you to notice which hand is moving and type in the chat box h for the heart hand and s for the stomach hand which hand is moving as you breathe yeah okay yeah so um, there is a mix most of you have um, have the stomach hand moving many of you have the heart hand moving and many of you have both okay so now you cannot have both moving what i want you to do is keep your hand here on your stomach keep your hand on the chest and this hand will not move because as you're breathing in your chest will not expand i want you to breathe into your stomach so do this with me breathing in gently as you breathe in i want you to imagine that your stomach is a balloon and it has to inflate and come out so your this hand will move so i'll just show you this breathing in you see this hand is moving and breathe out this goes in the balloon squeeze out the air from the balloon you notice my hand on the chest never moves so breathing in breathing out uh this takes a little practice i don't want you to breathe where your all your hand starts going and i don't want both your hands to move either only i'm asking you to keep your hands here just for practice so that you realize that this is it takes a little bit of practice but i want you to do it right now for 5 minutes let's to just to deep breathing i'll count you in and as so i don't want you to take a big quick gulp of breath in like and then let your stomach bloat out and then throw it out and sit like that no if you breathe in slowly breathe in for a count of 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 there's no hurry and now exhale 2 three, 3 4 5 6 breathe in again for a count of 6 your hand on the chest remains stable the hand on the stomach goes up and down so breathing in 1 2 3 4 5 6 and breathe out 1 2 3 4 5 6 let's do this a few more times breathing in don't be worried if your hand on the chest moves and you can't get it it's okay it requires practice but breathing in slowly itself will start calming you down breathing in 1 2 3 4 5 6 hold breathe out 2 3 4 5 6 one more time breathing in 1 2 3 4 5 6 hold breathing out 2 3 4 5 6 
and we are now going to tighten the screws a little more so i want you to breathe in for a count of 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 hold 2 3 4 5 6 exhale 2 3 four five six hold two three four five six breathe in two three four five six hold two three four five six breathe out Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. This is called box breathing. You breathe in for six, hold for six, breathe out for six, hold for six. So you're holding at the top and you're holding at the bottom of your breath. And just continue doing this. And as you do this. i want you to think of all the worries that you have and see if you can think of them as you're breathing in slowly breathe in 2 3 4 5 6 hold 2 3 4 5 6 breathe out 2 3 4 5 6 hold 2 3 4 5 6 continue this for three more rounds And now go back to normal breathing to so whichever breathing that you were doing fast breathing slow breathing whichever that was that's your normal way that you breathe how many of you find that even with this whatever four minutes of breathing there is a certain calmness that has come into you type yes if you feel it thank you and if any of you were more anxious because you couldn't breathe properly please forgive me the thing is if you practice this this becomes a very easy tool that you can use at any point of time now there is a there is a saying that says that you must practice your skills in peace time and not during the war that is in the middle of the war you cannot say okay fine now i'm going to decide how i'm going to shoot the gun or how i'm going to pull the bow and arrow you can't do it you have to practice everything while there is peace time when there is peace time you will practice your you will do your target practice you will decide which kind of guns you want to use and whether you're going to use a gun whether you're going to use a missile whether you're going to drive a tank all those things similarly you cannot do this immediately without practice you will not be able to do it while you're anxious because when you're anxious your body is already in a palpitation mode and which is why the step 2 which i'll show you will help you with that when you're already in high anxiety level but this is a breath work which you can practice twice or thrice during the day and just sit down and calm your body and then then when anxiety strikes you'll be able to go back to it easily now there are times in the middle of the night when i wake up with with 
palpitation and there is this dread that i'm feeling inside of me and i feel like everything is falling around me and that's when i sit and i consciously do the breathing i can do it because i've been practicing i've been practicing it over years and why did i start practicing it because i realized that i needed a solution to handle my own anxiety because otherwise what you're doing is you're transmitting that anxiety to everyone else, else around you your kids your pets your your maids your coworkers your colleagues everyone gets gets becomes a brunt gets a brunt of your anxiety so it's very important that you learn to control and regulate your nervous system now during the last um, few months there has been a new word which has been come into the mainstream and that is your vagus nerve v a g u s now vagus nerve is a nerve which starts from the back of your brain right up to the base of your um, bone backbone it goes and touches nearly every organ now this vagus nerve has to be regulated and when you breathe slowly this vagus nerve relaxes and allows all the functions of the various organs that is that it touches to actually happen properly now when you're breathing fast the vagus nerve is con- contracted and it really cannot do its work now you may have studied this in science where you're saying that you, your brain has to your body has to be not under the autonomous nervous system but under the parasympathetic nervous system now think of the word para it's like parachute right it helps you f- not fall off the sky but glide gently and fall fall down now this is the parachute this is your safety net when the parasympathetic nerve nervous system is activated you are in rest mode your body can regenerate reactivate and heal everything most of the diseases that we have today is traced back to the stress and anxiety that we carry so breathing this way helps you to regulate that vagus nerve i don't want you to get confused with too many things this is a very simple breathing exercise breathe in for 6 hold for 6 in exhale for 6 and again hold for 6 but you need to practice you need to practice this so once you practice i would suggest you when you get up in the morning you know how we get up in the morning right as soon as the alarm rings we jump out of bed or we lie in bed and we start scrolling i uh, don't want you to do any of that at least for the next few days when you when your alarm rings switch that off maybe put it on snooze mode for your eight uh, snooze mode for 8 minutes or 5 minutes but lie in bed placing your hands on your heart and on your stomach do this breathing see you don't even need to sit up and do it you don't need to sit up don't need to do in lotus position or on your head position or any of those positions you can just lie down in bed and do this one of my teachers calls it meditation so you can do this meditation breathing in holding breathing out holding does that sound easy enough type yes if you think this is easy yeah. yep it's easy but will you do it now type y so that i know that it is okay okay great no you will not go to sleep <laughs> you will not go to sleep now for those of you how many of you have got um, insomnia type i in the chat box sheetal i'll come back to that during q and a okay now this breathing now the same breathing pattern you can change it slightly to help you with sleep yep and that is again very simple rajni you've got pankli once insomnia what happens during that day you must find out that who comes home what fight do you have that you have monthly once insomnia so the uh, joking apart the way that you can go to sleep is by basically just breathing in for 6 and this time when you exhale you have to exhale for 9 your exhale has to be longer than your inhale and i bet you anything you do this for 15 minutes you won't even realize when you've fallen asleep so 
one is meditation which you do early in the morning the other one is boredition boredition we bore you to death so you breathe in and breathe out and you go to sleep so so this is a very um, it acts very fast when you're breathing in for 6 and you're breathing out consciously for 9 where your in- exhale is longer than your inhale it allows your again your brain to calm down and sends a signal to your brain that you know it's time to rest it's time to let go of the control so this one more a tool that i want to show you right now and this is what do you do when let's say when you are in the throes of anxiety would you like to know what to do then let's say there is a huge anxiety attack which is com- coming up and you don't know what to do would you like to know what to do there i b i o bring it on so that i can i know that you want to know this okay okay wonderful so i hope you all have a journal but i'll need that also so let's say you you are you're going to you've gone to office you've gone back to office and this is your first day in office and you're having a severe severe attack of anxiety where your palms are very cold you're sweating your stomach is in knots you are also having difficulty breathing let's say because now there is a whole uh, talk which is happening in your mind right you're meeting your colleagues for the first time you you are not sure how to behave you're not sure how they will behave you're not sure if you like them you're not sure whether they will like you you're not sure whether your clothes are appropriate you're not sure whether your hair is appropriate and you have this huge self talk going on about i'm not good enough i'm not talented enough i'm not tall enough i'm not short enough i'm not pretty enough my nose is too big my ears are too small whatever it is that that is going on that starts as an automatic loop in your head creating anxiety so when this happens all i want you to do is and this is difficult to do when it happens but you can do it because if you try to push it away it will just come back stronger and stronger and stronger so what you have to do is observe what is happening in your body now most of us have no idea what happens to our body our head is in a different space our body is in a different space and there is no these two have got no connection at all so we do not know what we even feel in our body so what i want you to do right now as a practice it doesn't matter whether you have anxiety or not right now in the chat box i want you to write write down what do you notice about yourself what are you noticing about yourself right now are you restless are you highly interested are you are you engaged yeah you're feeling sleepy wonderful what else what else bring it up you're feeling yes feeling impatient you're feeling energetic yes great of course you'll feel restless you're not used to sitting like this for a long time right who's dreaming vivek i thought you're supposed to be present here calm and energetic Okay, great now that you named all these emotions whatever you're feeling i want you to look inside you and tell me type in the chat box where in your body are you feeling it where in your body are you feeling it yep yes wonderful you can feel it in more than one place also okay now uh our friend freud he had a very beautiful uh, quote he said that feelings which are buried will come back again alive okay so you can't bury any of these feelings whether you're feeling restless whether you're feeling bored whether you're feeling impatient whether you're feeling sleepy now that you identified where in your body you're feeling it you named it and you felt it now i want you to look at all those it's the same with all feelings i want you to look at all those feelings or whatever you're feeling and say i notice that i'm feeling sleepy 
I notice that I'm feeling restless. I notice that I'm feeling impatient, whatever it is. I notice that I'm feeling calm. What happens then? What you're doing is you're pulling yourself away from saying, instead of saying, I am restless, I am calm, you are just noticing. Now you become an observer and this, this diffuses it. You This emotion or this feeling that you have becomes separate. And when it becomes separate, you will notice that the, the charge is not the same. For instance, if you're feeling sleepy, you will not feel as sleepy because now you're noticing that you're sleepy, right? So, yeah. So this mixed emotions, especially when you're ang anxious, you have to sit and name all the emotions that you're feeling, not just saying mixed, uh, mixed emotions. Mixed emotions is not emotions. What are the emotions that you're feeling? What are the feelings that you're feeling? You sit down and notice that. And this is a great time for you to take a book and write down everything that you're feeling, everything that is going on in your head in a very non-judgmental way. For instance, let me tell you how you'll do it when you're anxious. Let's say you have to make a presentation and you're very worried about the entire thing and you're already feeling your hands have become cold. You're sure that you're going to lose your voice. You're sure that you're going to mess up the presentation. You take a book and you write each and everything down. Oh, I noticed that my hands have grown cold. Will I, will I mess up the presentation? What if nobody likes it? What if the PowerPoint goes off? What if the internet goes off? What if the PowerPoint doesn't come off? What if all the things that I've written are not really the right things? What if there's something else that I should have written? What if everyone judges me? I'm sure that they're going to judge me. I'm sure they're going to say that I'm, I'm stupid and I always mess up. Whatever is going on in your head, you will put it down on paper. I like to call this the brain dump. Now, why am I asking you to do this? Now, this is a mix of observing your feelings and then journaling out your emotions. Why do we do that? Because already you have these thoughts going on in your head, right? Now, I'm going to give you a very gross ana analogy. Let's assume that you have the toilet in your, one of the toilets in your house is backed up. It's not flushing properly. You don't, you decide not to do about it. And it starts backing up and backing up and backing up. And very soon, if you do nothing, it falls on the bathroom floor. And when it falls on the bathroom floor, even if you still keep ignoring it, it fills your house. And what happens? Tell me what happens. You will be living in the midst of stink. Am I right? Type yes or no? Unless you decide to ignore it and put a carpet over it. Yep. Now, this is the exact same thing which is happening in your head. The thoughts are already going on. And over the thoughts, you're piling one thought upon the other, one thought upon the other, one thought upon the other. And your head is filled with it. So you have no space for any kind of creative thinking over there. I remember someone had mentioned that I cannot think I'm very confused. This is why you become very confused because everything is inside it. So what do you do? If you let it stay here in between your two years, what happens is it is going to stink up your entire life. Anxiety, while it can be managed, anxiety can mess you up real fast and real, too much. it can mess you up really well. And once it messes you up, and it goes into the stage where it goes into depression and it can move into other mental illnesses. You have to face it right now. So what you do is everything that is happening in your head, once you put it down on paper, it is taken away from your head and it is on the paper. So then your head is clear to do anything else. Now, journaling is called by various names. There are people who call it the morning pages. There are people who call, call it just simply journaling. People who call it morning writing. The thing is that as soon as you get up in the morning, because you wake up with anxiety and stress as your bedfellows, when you get up in the morning, you pick up your journal and you just start writing everything that is there in your head and clear it from your head so that then when you go and face, the, face your day, your day is much, much, much smoother and clearer. 
it's a simple exercise but it's a very 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 powerful exercise now i have a morning session which i lead which is called morning glory where um, we have members who join in to create a structure for their lives now one of the reasons that many of them have come in is because they have anxiety and anxiety happens because you have no clear structure all you're doing is you're getting up in the morning and valoing in the anxiety or you're ignoring the anxiety and you're you're valoing in your distractions and we have realized that every morning when you sit and you have a structure to your day whether it is a breathing that you do whether it's a journaling that you do what happens is anxiety starts reducing in your life you then you know how to handle anxiety much better and then you know how when anxiety strikes all you have to do is just sit and breathe that's it because everything that you do here is a practice that's why all these are called practices these are practices they are not processes these are practices which you need to do on a daily basis every day yes the source of anxiety differs from one person to the other definitely it differs but you will realize that the root of it is all is what it's fear it's a fear of something that we cannot control am i right so let's do a simple exercise think of something that you're anxious about bring that to mind okay and now in your notebook i want you to make two columns two columns in one column write over there what i cannot control and on the other other column right what i can control and now that you've thought of some situation i want you to write down in the first column all the things that you cannot control can i take this during q and a chandrashekar so what can you control now when you have anxiety your anxiety is not about animal jumping on you that is unexpected whatever incidents that happen in our life so anxiety is normally about let's say you have to go for a social a social gathering and you have anxiety you have to go to work and you have anxiety the your offices have opened and you need to go okay let's take that as an example your offices have opened and you have to go to office what are the things that you cannot control write that in column 1 or if you feel brave enough write that in the chat box for example you cannot control how your colleagues will react you cannot control whether you will have friendly whether you'll have a friendly boss or a terrible boss you cannot control whether other people will do the work or whether you will not be able to do the work yes no shridhar make them make it very very specific what are the things that you cannot control nag balaji procrastination is not procrastination is not due to someone else procrastination is your own thing when you mingle with others what other people think of you is is not under your control and in the other column write down what you can control for instance like vivek wrote you can control your response to the other person you can control what you're thinking you can control your thoughts you can control your emotions you can do things to manage your anxiety yes chandrashekar that's exactly what i said you can control how you re- respond to another person not react reaction is trigger head trigger no we're looking at how we respond respond is the ability to react responsibly 
And if you look at your two columns, you will realize that everything which is external is something that you cannot control, right? And the only things that you can control is you and your reaction, your response to what is happening in the outside world. And that makes things much more easier, isn't it? Because now the only thing that you have to control is your thoughts. How do you control your thoughts? I already told you. Can you tell me how, do you, how you can control your thoughts? One easy way to control your thoughts. You also had an experience of it. Wonderful, Praveen. Yes, you breathe. You breathe. So as you breathe slowly, your thoughts start slowing down. You breathe in for six. Hold for six. Breathe out for six. Hold for six. You can always, if you're feeling anxious, start feeling anxious in the office, go to the bathroom and go to the washroom and do your breathing exercise. You will feel calm immediately. Yes, writing on, writing on paper, writing in a journal, these are all additional exercises that you can do. But the first and foremost exercise that you can do at any point of time is just breathing in and out, in and out. Yeah. It may not always be possible for, for you to have silence when you're doing your breathing. See, uh, Ramana Maharshi had said uh, once, he, one of his favorite quotes was, if you think you're very enlightened, spend a day with your family. So the thing is, when we are on the top of the hills, it's very easy to feel calm when there's no one else. I spent, um, I had a, a staycation for one month in Masuri all alone. It was beautiful. There was no one around to disturb me. I was at peace. But the day that I realized that I had to start coming home, my anxiety started coming up because I knew I had to come back and deal with whatever happens on a day-to-day -day basis in your house, in your work. So the thing is, you have to learn to breathe when everything else around you is falling apart. And for to do that, one of the most important things is practice Practice, practice, practice. So you have to commit to doing this, learning how to breathe in and out. Um, when you go to become a monk, if any of you are deciding to become a monk, huh, the first thing that they do in monk school is teach you how to breathe. Because as babies, we always knew how to breathe, right? It's only that as we start growing up and stress came in, we started doing shallow breathing. But if you look at how a uh, baby breathes, or I can see my dog lying down here and breathing. Deep breath. Deep breath. And that is how they relax. So it's you can do this anywhere. Anywhere. Everyone with me? Now, because you have been a fantastic audience, I'm going to show you a small, another small routine, which also you can do. Would you like to learn that? Okay. Are you sure? It's a very simple one. Okay. Now, normally when I do it, I use a script and I say a whole lot of things, but um, you can, this is called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. Now, what emotional freedom technique does is it, we use various meridian points in our body, which we then just tap on. And as we tap on, each of these points are connected to an internal organ. And as we tap on it, it releases the blocks which, which may be there and we start feeling much calmer. So now EFT is used in conjunction with words where first you do a round of what is known as negative tapping, where you as you tap, you address all the negative feelings that you're feeling and then you start shifting it and putting in a round of positive tapping. So typically wh what you do, these are the eight points that I use. One is where your eyebrow starts, you use two fingers and you just tap. Then you take the side of your eye where you can feel the bone and just tap. Then you go down where your cheekbone starts and tap. This is the under the eye point. Then you tap under the nose. At your chin point where you have the cleft of your chin, you tap. You tap in the center of your heart near the collarbone. You tap. 
you tap under the arm on top of the head and then with both hands in the center of your heart okay so you've done the thymus point and the heart center which you'll be tapping so would you like to try it with me i'll i'll just do the script you can just tap along with me are you ready so i like this because sometimes when you tap like this you look this like a monkey point when you start doing it and you can't imagine how powerful this is when you start doing it and the beauty of tapping is it works whether you believe it or not just like your breath work it works whether you believe it or not so you can roll your eyes all you want and tap but it still works it's it has got the ability to calm you down and bring you bring you to neutral so think of some incident which makes you highly stressed and anxious think of some incident no you can keep your eyes open think of some incident which which is which causes you a lot of stress most of us don't have to go very far our spouse our kids our in-laws our work comes to mind anyways and now i want you to in your mind give it a rating on a scale of 0 to 10 with zero being i don't feel anything i am in a zen mode and 10 is i am so anxious and stressed i can't breathe so on a scale of 0 to 10 what is the first number that comes to your mind type that in the chat box and i want to show you the magic if you if it's zero shital then don't do it at all okay okay wonderful Zero is I don't feel anything. I am in completely Zen mode. I'm happy with my life, and tennis. I'm so stressed. I can't breathe. Wonderful. So many of you have got in the range of nine, eight, nine. Okay, wonderful. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of the incident and then start do this. This is what is known as a karate chop. Do this and say, even though I feel. so stressed and anxious i deeply and completely accept myself even though i feel so stressed and anxious i deeply and completely accept myself even though i feel so stressed and anxious i deeply and completely accept myself and how i feel and now take three deep breaths in breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth two more times breathe in one more time breathe in and out and now let's start tapping at the eyebrow point and say i am so stressed side of the eye the situation completely stresses me out under the eye i just cannot breathe under the nose i feel it in the pit of my stomach chin point the idea of confronting this makes me feel panicked at the throat my heart is beating faster under the arm i just don't want to do it top of the head i wish i could get under the covers and go to sleep I have a point. Why don't I just watch Netflix for a while? Side of the eye. I'll do this work a little later. Under the eye, I have time. Under the nose, I don't have time, but I'll do it later. Chin point. I'm so stressed. Collarbone. I have no ideas. Under the under the arm, I'm feeling so anxious. Top of the head. My shoulders feel tight. I bro point What do I do side of the eye I hate being so anxious under the eye I'm so depressed that I'm anxious under the nose what do I do chin point I'm always so anxious I'm so stressed under the arm I wish I knew how to handle my stress top of the head 
I wish the other person would behave themselves. Tap at the chest, chest and say, I wish they didn't trigger me so much. You see what you're doing? You're pointing your fingers on everything that is outside. And now I want you to just breathe in again three times in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And now you tap at the at the eyebrow point and say, every time this trigger comes up, side of the eye, I promise to remember to breathe. Under the eye, I take slow, deep breaths and breathe in and breathe out under the nose and I calm my mind. Chin point. I don't need to respond now. Collarbone. I don't need to react now. Under the arm. I take my time. Top of the head. I'm willing to release my overwhelm. Eyebrow point. I'm willing to release my overwhelm side of the eye and replace it with calm. Under the eye, I don't need to know everything. Under the nose, one step at a time. Chin point, I only need to know my next tiny step. Collarbone, one step at a time. Under the arm, I begin to breathe calmly, top of the head, and I slow down my thoughts. Eyebrow point, one step at a time. Side of the eye, one step at a time. Under the, no under the eye, I don't need to react. Under the nose, I don't need to respond. Chin point. One step at a time. And every time I'm anxious under the arm, I remind myself of this prayer. Top of the head, Lord, help me and help me change the things I can. I draw point and accept the things that I can't. Side of the eye and Lord. Give me the wisdom under the eye to know the difference. Under the nose, I breathe gently and slowly. Chin point, and I replace my overwhelm with calm. At the, at the heart point, I replace overwhelm with calm, and I begin to breathe into my feelings. Take a deep breath in, release through your nose, through your mouth. Two more times, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now think of that same stressful situation that you thought about and now give it a rating. Do you notice this is just, it is just five minutes of tapping and the rating has already come down. If you still feel it, you just, so what I'm telling you is what the beauty of tapping is, you don't even need the words. You can just tap on these points. You can just tap and you're just talking to yourself. You're just talking to yourself. Just tap on these points. It's another very powerful tool that you can use for anxiety. So I think I've run out of time. I've gone over by five minutes. 
So, Sharon, I'll hand it back to you. <laughs> uh, no problem, uh, yeah. Sheila. We were actually thoroughly enjoying the session. We didn't uh, actually, you know, the, take a look at the time. Uh, thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you You're for welcome. taking us through this uh, journey and also, you know, stressing on the importance of uh, the dedication. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. <laughs> dedication. And that's something that I really am going to personally try doing that. Yeah. I've been, uh, you know, a, a victim of anxiety for a, for a couple of years uh, earlier, mm -hmm. but then slowly coming out of it, doing different things I can do. Okay. So this, uh, I was really looking forward for this session and I'm glad uh, we had you on the session and I hope all the audience also feel the same. Yeah. So uh, before we, we move on to the Q&A, uh, Sheila, mm -hmm. I would just like to uh, launch the quick feedback poll okay. uh, so that we collect some feedback from the audience as in yeah. how did they like the session sure. and also what kind of sessions they want us to sort of mm -hmm. do, do in the future. So uh, request everyone, there's a poll launched on your screens. Please take a minute and uh, please fill in uh, the, the feedback uh, poll so that uh, we can curate uh, specially designed uh, se uh, sessions like this and get uh, speakers like Sheila going forward and, and get the sessions done for you. It's, it's very, very important for us that you fill out this uh, feedback poll. So uh, we uh, sort of move on to the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, request everyone who has uh, something to ask to Sheila to raise their hands and I'll probably uh, move you to the panel and then you can speak to Sheila directly and ask her, get your questions answered. Or you can also uh, put your questions in the chat box. She'll be able to answer, pick it up from there and answer these questions. Yeah. While they are filling out the poll, there's one thing that I want you to mention is that sure. uh, one of the, there are three things which give us a whole lot of anxiety. One is our uh, relationships. The second is our money. And third is our health. Now, as far as relationships and money are concerned, we have, we do have uh, programs uh, under Lumiere, which is my company, uh, where we take people through various issues that they may be facing around money. So right next week, there is a three-day free session that I'm doing called My Money Story, okay. which actually works around the conditioning and mindset of money. So if if any of your participants would like to join it, I can ask Preeti to put the link in the chat box and they can just sign up and join the WhatsApp group. It's a, it's a free session. What we'll be addressing over there is um, why we do not have the money that we say we want. And why do we have, because most of us have money, but we do not have consistent money. So right. what is, how is it that we can actually, and some of us, even when we have plenty of money, we have a lot of anxiety of it running out, of it going off, of us losing our job, of our business not doing well. There are a whole lot of things. So this actually addresses the mindset and the conditioning that you can change. Okay. And we'll be looking at six laws that we can apply almost immediately. So it's a free session. And mm -hmm. I would highly encourage everyone to participate and join the group and join the next webinar. Wonderful. That's actually like a like a bonus thing that we've yeah, got bonus, today in this yeah. session. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, every anyone who who may be interested in the session, there's a link in the chat box. Please go ahead and uh, I think uh, Preeti has put it on the host and panelists. Yeah, I'm gonna put it, it yeah. to everyone. Okay. I'm gonna paste the link here, uh, guys. There's a link uh, in the chat box if you're interested to attend the session that Sheila is conducting. Please uh, go ahead and do that. And anyone who may have any questions uh, that you want to ask Sheila, this is the time. Please, uh, when is the session is one of the questions that you've received. <laughs> I think it's next Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Great. Six to seven or seven to eight. Once you join the group, you'll, you'll get the details there. Yeah. Yeah, it's next week. So any questions on anxiety, any doubts? But oh, they're still filling out the poll. Okay, fine. Yeah. While you're filling out the poll, you can also ask the questions. To see. There's one. Uh, 
Okay, this is four thirty-six. Vivek is asking how to avoid anxiety feeling mostly. Okay, so Vivek, you want the truth or the lies? <laughs> tell me that first, and based on that, I'll tell you. I'll decide whether to tell you the truth. <laughs> you want both the truth and the lie? Okay, fine. Okay. The lie is, it's easy. Anxiety will go away just like that. the truth is like i said anxiety is an emotion so just like every other feeling that you have in your body you have to accept the anxiety but you you have to just manage it you'll be able to manage it so that then anxiety doesn't affect your day to day work so the the tools that i've given you are very simple and they're very practical and you can use it to immediately start feeling the change within you once you start using the tools it is not i'm not going to say that you will never have an anxiety attack again you will because we are we are very we are trained to be frightful of what is going to happen in the future now i do anxiety coaching where i teach them a whole lot of other tools to actually even out the day so that you don't start your day with anxiety you don't end your day with anxiety but it's an emotion it will keep coming up you have to just learn to manage it no okay now when you say like yoda says right in star wars he says do or do not no try because try means you're already telling your subconscious it's okay to fail it's okay not to do it so never use the word try say thanks thanks for the same we'll definitely do it some days you may not do it that's perfectly okay how can we try to okay this is a very interesting question thank you shivani how can we try to respond more instead of reacting as during anxiety most okay so what is the thing is you have something which is a trigger and you have something which is your response to it now normally between the trigger and the response there's no space so you remember when we were kids we were told that when you get angry count up to 10 or count up to 20 in a language that you don't know whatever any of those things so what were they trying to do they were trying to create a space between the trigger and between the response so the way you will you will respond instead of reacting is when the trigger happens take a deep calming breath and move away from the situation so if you can if you can physically move away move physically away if not mentally detach yourself from the situation and do not respond at the same time yeah you teach your children right you now uh, see as your i don't know about you but i have i have grown up children and with grown up children because when there are all adults staying in a room there is a whole lot of conflict which will happen no matter how much you love each other there will be a conflict which keeps happening so when one of them comes running down the running down the stairs yelling and shouting one thing that i do is even though it's very difficult is to just take deep breaths and not respond of course that makes them even more mad but the thing is it gives you a chance to not say something which is hurtful and which you will regret later on so the the way you respond is by in, just give a gap between the stimulus and between the response there has to be a gap just try to increase the gap you know vivek has changed the way that he said it wonderful vivek i hope this answered your question shivani how to avoid negative thinking okay this is a whole new uh exercise but to give you one of the ways that you can create any change the first step to change is always awareness first when you're aware that you're thinking negatively then you can stop negative thinking uh, so that is that is my short answer to this very complex topic so the first thing that you can do is become aware that you're thinking negatively the second thing that you can do is you can either you can either flip it into a more positive thought or my most favorite technique is look for what is good in that situation every situation has either an experience or a lesson 
So look for what is good. We are, we do negative thinking because we are focused on everything that is going wrong in our life. So instead of that, shift your focus. Shift your focus and say, okay, fine. I catch myself, okay, and I'm thinking negatively. What can I look at in my life and know that it is going? Some things which are working really well. Now, if you're going to say I have nothing which is working well, I would encourage you to look at your breath. If you're breathing, it means you're alive. If you're alive, it means you still have a choice and you still have a chance. If you look up, you will see that you have a roof over your head. If you look down, you'll see the earth is holding you. You're not floating around in on a in space, right? The earth is holding you. There is stability and there is security. You just have to convert it into every area of your life. In our uh, session on morning glory, we do every day. We do ten things that we are grateful for. and we have to do 10 things that we are grateful for which are different from the day that we did previously and it's a very powerful exercise because every day when you write down or you think about the things that you can be grateful of grateful for your negative thinking tendency will start reducing so it is mostly concentrating on what you have rather than what you don't have and what yeah. you do not have yeah i think today only there was a there was a facebook there was a whatsapp post which showed a guy with a plate with a small quarter of a cake and another guy with a full cake with a quarter missing say happiness is positive people focus on the piece of cake that you, they have in their in their uh, plate yeah. and people who are negative focus on that that which is missing, missing part yeah yeah missing part so yeah you're right uh, i've been calling you shiva sometimes and sharan sometimes but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right negative thinking happens when we focus on what we lack in our life any other questions uh, from the audience before we close the session uh, for today if there are any questions you can raise your hand you can talk to sheila directly or you can put your questions in the chat box Thank you, Vivek. Okay, I think either we have yeah. a shy audience today, or <laughs> either the audience has uh, has got everything from the session and they don't have anything to ask. Yeah. So, <laughs> breathing exercise. You can do. You can start with doing fifteen minutes in the morning and fifteen minutes in the evening. Yeah, fifteen minutes. Yeah, you can even sit and do it for half an hour, one hour. It's okay, but fifteen minutes to start with. Do just fifteen minutes. Set a timer so that you know. You know, when you're breathing, also you feel. Even though it's so important, we feel ah, oh, have to sit for fifteen minutes. So you can do it when you're going in the car. Let's say you're being driven somewhere. You can you can do it if you're waiting for your metro. You're waiting for your cab to come in. You can do it then. If you're waiting for the elevator to come. just practice you don't need to place both your hands there you can just start breathing deeply and no, being more you, mindful yeah that's yeah. the key the thing is you have to be breathe consciously not just breathe mindlessly lot of thoughts come when you say lot of thoughts come it's because you are paying attention to all those thoughts which have come right yeah so you're right the purpose gets lost so this is what is known as conscious breathing you breathe in and you breathe out consciously feel the breath going in feel the breath coming out what is this even common question on session i didn't understand the question sharon so uh, shila do you have any books uh, that you that you that i would recommend recommend for all the audience to read absolutely there is a book called breath i forget his uh, i think preeti it's right i think it's there if you can see it breath it's a it's a beautiful book on how about the science of breath and how the breath is the most important thing that you can use i think that is that would be one of the books that i would definitely recommend i would uh, the second book that i would recommend is by michael singer 
one i remember the name and the other i forgot to remember the author so uh, those are two books that i would recommend the third book i would recommend is my own book i complete me it's available on amazon you can buy it so i complete me is a book on uh, the importance of giving importance to yourself so oh. it's a very simple book So, uh, Shilo, thank you so much uh, once again for joining us uh, this afternoon, for taking us, uh, you know, uh, and letting us know uh, all things about anxiety and how to overcome this particular uh, uh, thing in our lives, which actually, you know, creates a lot of problems. Yeah. And right. So, I think uh, we've all learned a lot uh, from you today, and a lot of exercises, a lot of ag- uh, techniques uh, that we can use going forward. to reduce anxiety and probably remove it from our lives so uh, personally thank you so much and also thank you on behalf of the audience and also would like to take the opportunity to thank the audience who's come in and who stayed to uh, stay throughout the session and uh, sort of willing to change uh, their lives by learning yeah. all the techniques and tips every friday so thank you everyone thank you for joining absolutely. in absolutely yeah my pleasure absolutely and i really loved interacting with the audience really wonderful audience so thank you very much for inviting me thank you sheila so that brings us to the end of the session and uh, for the audience uh, we'll meet again on next friday with our upcoming session on millionaire morning routine and you will receive a link to the recording of the session and also the registration link to the next session thank you so much Absolutely. thank you everyone bye thanks preeti for for being here thank you, thank you sharan